Well, hey guys, what's going on? It's Steph here. I hope you've been well. I certainly have been, and I'm doing something a little not traditional today, as you can see. Rest assured, I still have spiky hair under this hat. I'm filming my intro from the field. I never do it, but today is just such a special day. It's been absolutely amazing, and I, I just, I didn't want to wait to film my cut-ins. It's that good. So without giving anything away whatsoever and just letting you know this is the best hunt I have had at this virgin cellar hole, let's hop in. Okay, I've got a pretty deep 30-something signal right here. We'll take a look. Could be crap, could be something good. Only one way to find out. Okay, well, I haven't picked it up yet, but it certainly looks like what it kind of sounded like to me. We have a musket ball. Little guy. It's actually probably classified as a pistol ball. Hang on, let me rub this on my pants so you can actually get a better look at it versus me just rubbing dirt all over the yeah, face of it. <laughs> cool. That looks dropped, too. I don't think that was ever fired it would have some kind of mark of impact, I would think. So, cool, all right, we will gladly take that. Okay, so I'm right on the edge of the home site. My coil actually is right at the edge of it. Um, you can't see a depression very well on camera, but there is a depression there. I got a very low conductor, about maybe between a 14 and a 16, and pulled this out between the iron Assuming it's a button, I haven't even picked it up yet until now. Where's my light? Where's my light? Come on. Sorry, guys, it's tough in the woods. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Huh. I'm not sure. I'm not from... Oh, no, it is. It's just folded over. Okay, let me uh, clean this off. And... Huh. You know what, it's actually, I think this is the back of it. Wow, I'm not zoomed, sorry. Not focused at all, the cars are whipping by, this footage sucks. Anyway, um, it looks like part of a two-piece button. Let me recheck the hole, see if I can find the front. This is obviously the back with the shank. Um, but I'll be back, one way or another. Well, now I'm on the fence about this one. I don't know if it's an early colonial two-piece button. Uh, that's what I was thinking because it would have accepted a pewter face. The back is tom back and it was kind of has this lip that's going up, which suggests that it did have a front. But honestly, I think this is just a really burned tom back button. This house definitely burned down. I have found some evidence of the burn down in some coins I've dug here. They've been in really interesting condition, bright orange, black, whatever, you name it. So I think this is just evidence of that burn down in a 250 to 300 year old button. That's cool. I like when things provide insight into what actually went down at a homestead well over 200 years ago. Okay, I've got a banging signal right here. Take a look at this. Very loud and proud. Let's see what it is. All right, well, that didn't take much effort. It was maybe four to six inches. It's right there, picked it up for a second. And with those numbers, it's either gonna be a button or an Indian head scent, so. It's a button, we can see the shank post there with a little bit of a back mark coming through. And I'm sure there's nothing on the front, there never is. <laughs> At least not for me. But uh, yeah, if there is something on there, I'll come back because I do intend to brush it out here. Yeah, I'm not really seeing anything. And again, just a bit of a back mark coming through. So this will be early 1800s, maybe 1800 to 1830 or so would be my guess. Very good. I may have just looked out big time here. Take a look at this one. that one's got me excited. Well, it would appear we did indeed luck out. Look at that acid green color. I cannot wait to see what this is. It's 
get this in the sun properly. Give her a wipe. Oh man, what are you gonna be? This could be something different, which would be really cool because all I found out here basically are KG2s. I did get a Connecticut and a Drape Bust half cent. But uh, yeah, let me spend some time on this, guys, because I really don't know what it is. <laughs> obviously trying to buy myself time by talking about it but this really could be something different and I don't want to be too rough with it so I'll be back to you soon but <laughs> hell yeah that's a capper I love it love it love it oh man you guys I've got a first here you can just see v-e-r-m and actori this is a Vermont State Copper. I believe these were minted somewhere between 1785 and 1788. Um, before we had a federal mint established in 1792, the colonies began making their own coinage, and Vermonts are very tough to find, so I am really excited about that. I think the bust is, bust is uh, facing left, and the reavers can't get anything off of that at the moment it's really worn uh, the green is flaking so i'm hoping that possibly there are still details under the green but frankly i don't think so i think that might be my details layer so i need to go run and take photos <laughs> before this disappears oh my goodness if it does clean up well i'll be sure to put something on the screen for you rather than just a non-dug example but uh Wow, that is a hell of a first. <laughs> no Vermonts. I have one New York, which is a Nova Eboric. Exceedingly rare, but it's in terrible condition. I have several Connecticut's, and I don't think I have another state coin. This would be it. So, wow, that is a fantastic find. Okay, I got a very low conductor right here. It was ringing up right around maybe a 16. And it sounded bigger than a 22 casing. So we have a little button here. I'm assuming that will probably be made of Tomback. Looks like there might be something on there. Can't quite see it. The shank is intact. And let's see, is that a root or is that cloth? What do you think? It kind of looks like fabric to me. That's cool. Let me brush this off carefully and I'll come right back. Okay. Nothing I can see on the front as of right now. I think that's just corrosion. I'm not sure. And that was not thread through the back. That was just part of a root. <laughs> and by the way, I've gotten a lot of questions on this. What is tomback is that a material or a style of button and it's technically the material it's a brass alloy and i'm going to put something up on the screen right now because i can't remember the mixture of what else is in there i know there's some zinc possibly copper i can't remember but depending on how the alloy was mixed would depend on geez that is a loud truck i'm sorry would depend on how well uh, these held up in the ground so something like this i would imagine has a higher zinc content than the shiny ones that we see. But you can identify them by this kind of blob here, the way the shank is attached. That's a clue. And of course, how low they ring up if they're not coming out of the ground, super shiny, silvery color. So hopefully that will answer some questions. I've been meaning to get the, I've been meaning to get to that because I've gotten a lot of questions on it. So this is an 18th century button all day. We love it. Well, at least I hope we love it. I love it anyway. Okay, we're going to see if we have a little button spill going on. Right there where the dirt is disturbed was where I just dug that little tom back button. This is coming in right around the same. Let's check it out. See if it's a match. Well... It's not a match. It's similar, but it's not a match. <laughs> it was about six inches down, right at the bottom of that hole. And I pulled it out. It looked like the coin at first, but that's not, <laughs> not going to happen at those numbers. This appears to be yet another Tomback button. 
I don't see a design on the front just yet, but you never know. When I scrub it up at home, it might have something on there. No shank on this guy, but I mean, that was that. <laughs> And that was the tiny little button, so that's pretty cool. I think, uh, safe to say, I'm going to keep circling this area and see if I find more of these or more coins. I am not too far from that Vermont copper, so we'll see what happens. All right, let's look at this 40-something signal together. Time to dig it up. I'm having quite a day today. I just, I picked it up just to see, just to see if it was an artifact and worth bringing the camera out. And I didn't want to know what it was, but uh, it was unmistakable, so I apologize. Six inches down. Does anyone know what that is? Just at first glance? I do. It's not going to be in very good condition. But this is a ramrod thimble. This would have been stuffed up underneath the barrel of a musket. This is probably 18th century, I would say. It looks ancient. And uh, the ramrod would slide through it. You'd have three or four of these. And the one towards the, I think, facing the buttstock of the gun was the very decorative one. And that's what people refer to as a ramrod thimble. When, and they call these ramrod guides. But in reality... This is also a ramrod thimble, so just pointing out the correct terminology. <laughs> I'm shaking a bit. I haven't found one of these in four or five years. Oh, that's awesome. All right, let me clean it off properly, and I will come right back. Okay, I brushed it off. It almost looks like there's another little hole right here. I don't know why that would be, be interesting. Um, there you have it. I know it's not much to look at, guys, but this, to me, is so exciting. This is almost as, as exciting as the Vermont copper. You just don't find these very often. And it's an old gun part. I mean, think of, I mean, this could have been on a flintlock pistol. You know, think of Blackbeard's gun or something like that. Or this could have been on a musket. It's very small, but... You know, I'm not that familiar with firearms. I know enough to be dangerous, I guess. So I do know this is definitely a ramrod guide that would have been stuffed up underneath the barrel, like I said, and uh, pinned into the wood to hold it in place. But they do get lost, and we do find them, just not very often. So <laughs> that's awesome. That is a hell of a find. I'll put it with my other one. Love it. Well, this is becoming a theme today. <laughs> Another 18 signal. Let's see what it is. Well, sure enough, it wasn't deep at all. It was just like right here in the plug. Flipped it out. Yet another Tom back button. <laughs> I hope you guys like these. Uh, you can see this one is starting to shine through, so it might clean up okay. Oh, hell yes. Look at that. Oh, my God. That's going to be exquisite. Oh, what a day. Okay, let me brush this off and come back. It is not every day you find a Tom back button with a beautiful pattern etched in like that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that gets the blood pumping for me. <laughs> Awesome. Colonial button. Okay, let me come right back. Well, the back is nice and shiny. And the front. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. I have been standing here very carefully cleaning it with a uh, plastic bristle brush. It's, uh, I'll show you what I use. I don't use this on coppers or anything, but if I have something that's a little heavier duty, sometimes this will do the trick, but these are very tough bristles, so wouldn't recommend it for everything. And I was very careful because these are the types of buttons, these etched Tomback buttons that are beautiful, that will chip on me for whatever reason. Bad luck, I guess, but look at this stunner. Oh, that is incredible. So I will finish cleaning it when I get home this crud should come off, but I've cleaned it as much as I'm willing to in the field because it is not every day that we find a button that looks like that made of Tomback. 
that is just exquisite. Uh, it's almost like the finds keep getting better. I know everyone else's favorite find today is probably the Vermont copper, but, you know, the ramrod thimble, this beautiful button, and yeah, that Vermont copper. Ooh, I'm having a fantastic day. <laughs> Let's see if we can squeak out a few more finds. Have I said I think it's my day yet? Because, yeah, look at this. I think we all know what that is by now. Yeah, so once again, it's my day. Okay, it's down in there. You can see the green edge. It's about eh, six, seven inches or so. And this popped up first, which will have part of the coin impression on there. And I thought it might just be fun for a moment to try to figure it out, but there's no way we're going to figure it out. So we just got to go for it. I haven't seen it at all yet. Oh God, what a day. Whew. What a day. That rang up so high for a copper coin. I'll be able to see what this is. I can see, it looks like there's a bust coming through or something. And then we have, oh wow, that's, that's clean. One cent, okay. This is gonna be a draped bust or a Liberty cap. I can tell by the wreath. Oh my goodness. So we gotta get this side cleaned up. Oh guys, I think we might have a Liberty cap. I don't know. I don't know. Let me, <laughs> let me collect myself and, uh, yeah, we'll figure out what this is together, but it's certainly going to be an early U.S. large scent. So, oh man, what a day. Well, I hate to admit this. This is the back we were just looking at. I took my toothbrush to it, and it literally took off all of the details on the reverse. But I do have a positive ID. So before this side somehow gets destroyed by my brush, we can see her little bow tie there. This is a draped bust large scent. I believe this is 1796 to 1808. 1808? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> the dates will be on the screen with a non-dug example because I don't think we're going to have a whole lot of luck bringing this back. But it is good to have an ID. Very happy with that. And <laughs> second copper on the day. You bet I'm stoked, so that's awesome. We'll keep moving. Beautiful looking target right here. Doesn't get much more pure than that. Let's see what it is. Well, we've got another button here, good size. It's gonna be a copper or brass alloy given the way it rang up. Someone's beeping. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so obviously Shank is gone. Let's see if we have anything at all on the front. That would be a rare treat out here. Probably won't get that lucky, but let me brush it off and I'll come back. Just coming back because I said I would. No back mark, so probably 18th century, I would say. And the front is not offering any clues, so probably just a plain coat button, but we will certainly take it. They are really jumping out of the ground today. You really have to love it when the ground just lights up like today. <laughs> Here's a 30-something signal. Shallow, consistent. Should be an easy dig. Hopefully it's a good find. This is not what I was expecting. I don't know what it is yet. It was just up under that root and I just broke it. I'm not at the base of a tree or anything. It's just these briars. So I'm not too worried about killing those. Um, and I see something grass over here. It's like coin or dandy button size. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's a tomback dandy button. Maybe that's why it rang up so incredibly low. Very corroded. Oh, the poor thing. No, it's a brass one. Look at the circle in the middle. It's a nice pattern. It might just be salvageable. 
Let's see if we have a shank. I can't believe how low they ring up for a dandy button. I really, I can't stress that enough. Usually, usually those signals are like in the 50s, maybe even 60s, but uh, okay, I can't quite tell if there's a shank yet and I really don't want to make this any worse <laughs> than it already is. So let me clean it up and I'll be right back with you. Well, two things. It is a shame that the sun isn't out to help me show this off. And it's also a shame that it was clearly sitting in some moist ground. But look, you can see this dimple pattern around there. And then these delicate lines like a sunburst. And right in the center, there's a really cool spiral design. Oh, man, that was so beautiful back in the day. I can only imagine. It's really a shame that it held up so poorly. But this site's relics and most of the coins have been very toasty. Uh, but what are you going to do? I mean, I'm right near water. That tracks. So, oh, lovely, lovely button, though. This would have been on a great coat in the late 1700s, very, very early 1800s, maybe up till 1810. I think these were used, something like that. But I usually just uh, default to 1700s in my mind. So... Either way, incredible find, and uh, we'll try for a couple more targets. I was hoping to take pictures of, like, the spread of finds like I normally do for Facebook and Instagram when I'm outside, and I need light to do that, and I'm losing light fast. So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, <laughs> great, great find. Let's take a whack at this one. Why not? Doesn't look great. I think that's iron peeking through and fooling the machine, but just in case, I figured I would film it. Well, as we know, we shouldn't just trust the 2D screen for everything. We knew we had a repeatable target, right? It was tracing down from the upper ferrous limits, but because it was so repeatable, I knew it was probably iron with something else. And I was correct. We have a beautiful musket ball down here. Nice and white. Not sure if it was fired. It is a little bit misshapen, so probably. Nice. All right. So, you know, to those who are getting used to the manticore, don't be afraid to dig those signals that trace down from the upper ferrous limits. I know a lot of the time uh, it can be a big nail or something like that, but... If you get a repeatable signal, guys, you gotta dig it. Awesome. Well, I really am trying to hike out of here right now, but this place never seems to want to let me go. Here's a good signal. Let's dig it up. Yep, sure as anything, about six to seven inches down, right in the center of the plug. Got it out over here. It's thin, so I assume it's a button, and it certainly rang up that way. Anything? Anything? Do we even have a shank? No, we can't even have the decency to have a shank. Jeez. <laughs> anyway, okay, well, you know what? I really am going to try to get out of here now. Um, if there's something on this, I'll come back. If not, I guess we're going to say goodbye for the day. <sighs> I told you guys, this place is amazing. I am tickled to death with that Vermont copper. I am absolutely, I, like, I really hope it cleans up well. I hope it cleans up well. I hope I have a cut in showing that it cleaned up well. I'm not so sure about it though, but we'll see what happens. But I may have even been more excited about that ramrod thimble. I haven't found one in four or five years probably. Gun parts are amongst my favorite things to find. And that etched tom back button, get out of here. That was like one of the best buttons I've probably found ever. So what a day. I'm going to get out of here. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you've made it this far and haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell for notifications so that you don't miss a thing from me in the future. Because we will certainly be back here at this site and I cannot wait to see what else is here. I'm so excited about this spot still. So again, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Obviously, it was quite a special one and we'll see you next week.